Hello there and welcome back to the Agassina Zinger show with me your host Agassina Zinger and this is episode number 416 that's 416 of the Agassina Zinger show how you doing how you feeling great amazing how am I you know doing the best that I can on the last day of 2020 if it's just a first time not a search time but if it's your first time checking out the show via YouTube make sure you smash that like button hit subscribe turn on the notification bell and of course leave me a comment down below if you've got any thoughts regarding what I'm doing I'd love to hear what you have to say but here we are man here we are another another day which is not really another day because we're approaching the end of the year now oh we are at the end of the year now it's the 31st of December the last day before 2021 um a last day before this thing is finally behind us isn't it um i kind of get the, I know, i'm not sure about you but i do kind of get the feeling that once covid's over we're never gonna think about it again like i've kind of had the it kind of came to me a little bit today realization when i went shopping in the morning i was like you know what do you remember after 9 11 when everyone was afraid to go on planes for like the period of like a couple of months and then you know um just through pure resilience and the need to just go and travel we just sort of put it in the back of our minds even though we knew that you know even though we were aware at the time that there was an existential threat which we later then discovered through various documentaries and leaking of documents that most of it was um somewhat manufactured by you know the real powers at play right I, I won't really go into that more than in detail but the real guys know what i'm talking about but at that time we sort of had a bit of a fright we got put off a little bit obviously because seeing that stuff play out on tv was just insane i think nowadays if that if that would have happened i would assume the cameras would have just cut off i don't think they knew what was happening i think we were all caught in a trance um you know we all kind of had that assumption that you know these guys had mistakenly flown their planes into buildings because of a technical error or something i don't know but by the time the second plane went into the other building we were like oh no this is actually a terrorist attack this is absolutely heinous people actually went out to to hurt people yeah you know i mean this is not something that was done by accident etc 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 but life moved on right we did we ended up going on holiday so we remember going back on planes and i've got a sneaky suspicion that once covid once we've gotten the kind of handle on covid people have got vaccinated um, most people have got covid and have got have recovered we've um sort of shielded the vulnerable i think we're all going to just move on and forget about it like there's going to be those massive sort of celebratory um you know face mask burning sort of stuff right i think we're gonna have that similar to what burning man what they sort of do right where they sort of burn the effigy um at the end um i think we're gonna have the similar sort of thing it's called a celebration but i think in general um we're definitely going to see people just completely move on because at the moment it's all encapsulating in it i know for the you know i end up talking about it way too much on this podcast too which i'm trying to avoid um but you know it's part of our daily lives i guess um and that's all you really hear on the news for the most part like didn't the guy recently blow himself up in a caravan outside of an AT&T building in Nashville, Texas, and it hasn't made a blip on the news? Fair enough, I'm in the UK, so maybe the news is a bit different here, but I don't know what it is about, like, no one's even talking about it. This guy blew himself up in a caravan outside of an AT&T, right? Homegrown, um, you know, what you call it homegrown terrorists in the kind of quintessential terms and the most i've heard people talk about is his state of mental health and whether or not there was something that the government could have come in social services to help him out and stuff and you're thinking hold on if this guy is black or brown like people wouldn't be saying that they'd be going through all his you know extended family's backgrounds pulling up court records of his brother's sister's son who might have had a dui or something they'd be doing all sorts of shady dealings to kind of paint him out to be some sort of you know uh bin laden reincarnated but this guy you have everyone sort of emote and saying oh he was living in a van he was cut off he was isolated q and on it's like come on man but again no one's really talking about that it's kind of gone completely unnoticed it's sort of kind of disappeared into the urethra and it's just odd really really odd um again that's so why I'm, I'm thinking as soon as life re, normal life re, uh, resumes we're back in art galleries we're back going to holiday we're back going on holiday hanging out with friends getting ourselves blindly drunk dancing to good music going to theater shows playing football just hanging around and not doing jack shit we're going to completely forget about all this stuff we are we're just going to move on no one's ever going to speak about it ever again i have a sneaky suspicion about it. and again i could be proved wrong I'm not too sure i'm not saying i'm right and everything but i've got a sneaky suspicion that's going to exactly what's going to happen at the end of the day because um at the moment man i've never like again even myself like i've never been that 
politically minded or aware of anything like of of course the general stuff you see on the news fair enough but i've never really followed things i never even knew who people's names were or fair enough, i might have known their names but i didn't know i didn't have a judgment on their personality or their character but now i'm looking at people's faces and i'm like oh i don't like her i like him it's like what is this this is so r worded like we shouldn't be doing this population as a populist right we should be like i don't know making the best of the time that we have available you know making sure that we contribute into our family friends and local community making sure we're a stand-up person we're telling the truth and all this good stuff we shouldn't be caring about all these existential things that we have no um no influence on whatsoever right we all sit in here we've all got loads of things to say about how our various nations are handling covid but they're not listening to us they don't give a frick what we've got to say about stuff so why are we bothered it's just it really is a complete waste of time and resources it feels like but you know like i said i think once this blip is over once we all get kind of you know reincarn reacclimated back to normal life because i think there will be some adjustment too i think all this time spent at home has kind of you know made people a little bit um frightened of the outdoors i remember the first couple of months when everyone was sort of crossing the road and staying on either side of the street on the pavement walking and stuff and not wanting to touch anyone <laughs> yeah i can imagine there's going to be a little bit of an easing an easing in process but once that's done it's going to be completely over once all the so once all the australians and south africans start coming up australians mostly start coming over to the uk to hold to party and to have fun over you know over the summer holiday wherever they come and holiday you know how those guys are and girls they're very tactile they love a good hug once they all come over it's over it's a wrap once all the italians and spanish people that have kind of fled and um, back to their motherland come back again and they're back, we see them back in raves again it's gonna it's gonna be a wrap they're gonna be hugging you kissing you sharing joints and shit you know and have all other other and all other stuff under the sun and we're all gonna be be one happy family again we're going to put politics to one side and we're going to do the things that we can do to affect change whether it's local politics whether it's charity work community work whatever it may be but all this like big picture sort of like let me talk about stuff that's happening in westminster and what stuff it's just we are so we are so like um minuscule in that equation like we don't like nothing if they're not even listening to the like look I follow this international sage, right? Um, the center for whatever, the, the, the people that are advising um, the, the government on our COVID response. And for the most part, on their Twitter account, from what I've seen so far, just a quick glance at the people that speak or that have recorded videos on their feed. Most of the people there are of a Caucasian persuasion. Most of the people there seem like, sound like they're fairly well-educated people from very well-to-do backgrounds. And they're putting together some, putting forward some very good cogent points about how to address COVID, what's the best approach, how it's imperative that we go in, on the front foot and we do this and we do that. And guess what the government's doing? La, 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 la they're not listening to anything so imagine me little old me my little um healy hansen fleece top drinking uh cheap whiskey out of a red cup imagine what they're thinking about me do you think they're listening to me nah i don't think so i don't think so anyway what can you do this is jackson's english show last episode of 2020 so let's get it going and get a move on um first thing out of the gate um good news for all of us uk residents good good news at last um the oxford astrazeneca vaccine has been approved for use in the uk and again um just top of the level information regarding this is that it's helpful because i guess you don't have to um it doesn't have to be stored in a very specialist refrigerator as the other as a previous vaccine vaccine has to be stored in so at the moment we've got two vaccines on the market that we can be that can be used that can be deployed one that obviously has to get stored in special conditions and can be obviously administered in certain locations and one that could be basically uh, delivered to your local gp and all the other places that they're going to use as stadiums and all that stuff so it's a real big game changer because it kind of opens up um the possibility to vaccinate huge swaths of our population so it's great 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 news again i've not really heard much jubi i've not heard as much jubilation around this news so i'm still wary as to what the approach is like it, it seems like even though this should be news that the tories should be really shouting from the rooftops to kind of gain a little bit of good you no know, to kind of gain to kind of, uh, I don't know, to fry some good news out there because for the most part, everyone thinks the Tories are doing a terrible job. You'd assume they'd be shouting about it's more from the rooftops. But I guess because of the numbers, because of the time we've been under such lockdown, this is not really the time to be gloating and patting yourself on the back. But still, it's a good thing regardless. So this is from the BBC. It says COVID-19 Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine approved for use in UK. It says the following. 
The Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine has been approved for use in the UK with the first doses due to be given on Monday. So that's next week. There'll be 530 doses available from next week. The vaccination centres will now start inviting patients to come and get the jabs. I'm assuming it's going to go for the most vulnerable all the way down. Priority groups for immunisation have already been identified, starting with care home residents, the over 80s and healthcare workers. Brilliant. It comes with millions uh, more in England are placed in tier four restrictions, which I'll talk about later. Um, the UK has ordered 100 million doses of the new vaccine enough to vaccinate 50 million people which is great at the moment i heard someone say like we need what two million vaccines two million vaccinations per week with a 90 percent um what you call it acceptance whatever right 90 percent of the people or the population have to kind of be down to take it and then from then two million of those people need to get done every single week in order to have the whole population vaccinated and that still will take a few months so it's going to be a herculean of effort to get that sorted um it continues eventually all over 50s and younger adults with health conditions will be offered the jab in the first phase of the rollout more than 25 million people in total it is hoped that about 2 million patients at week could be uh, vaccinated with two vaccines that are approved on Tuesday, for five fifty three um thousand one hundred and thirty three hundred new COVID cases were recorded in the UK, the highest single day rise since mass testing began and as well as 414 more deaths within a 28 day positive test so it's, we're in bleak times at the moment again it could be due to the season we're in right it's a winter flu season's around all that good stuff but it's not really been a great time for the um, people that are obviously suffering um you know thoughts and feelings go out to thoughts and prayers sorry go out to obviously people that have been affected by covid and have people and their family pass away because you know especially at this time when we're so close to having some sort of break through some light at the end of the tunnel to lose somebody close to your family must be super heartbreaking but hopefully those who are on you know sick to some degree in icus can hold on just that bit longer and then vaccines can be administered and we can slowly but surely get our lives back to normal um families repaired and get you you know all that good stuff you know we need it everyone kind of needs it. i think people have been fed up especially with our approach in the uk it's not been the best it continues um the medicines and healthcare products um regulatory agency the mhra has authorized two full doses of the Oxford vaccine with the second dose to be given four to 12 weeks after the first. The immunization campaign will now shift to giving as many people as possible their first dose of vaccine with the second dose following within that period. Within the Pfizer-BioNTech jab rollout began um, the aim was to give the second dose after three weeks, but based on the advice from the Joint Committee on Vaccinations and Immunization, the aim now is to give as many vulnerable people some of the protection from COVID irrespective of the jab they are given. Great to hear. The Oxford vaccine is easier to store and distribute as it can be kept at normal fridge temperature, unlike the Pfizer BioNTech jab that has to be kept at a seven, minus 70 degrees Celsius. There is also more confidence about supply as it's a UK made, whereas the BioNTech jab has been shipped in from Belgium. So that's excellent excellent news right it's all been made here in the uk approved by a great scientist so again great um job for everybody there um involved and um, again i can't wait for all these things to get sorted so we can finally finally get back to some semblance of normality because you know um i think like most of us out there i've had enough of you know these extended periods of lockdown that haven't really been working you know in any way shape or form really if you look at the numbers but you know the government will tell you different then um we also got news that's funny <laughs> most of the country's been placed in tier four restrictions which is basically our highest tier um it basically means everything is closed down apart from essential shops such as supermarkets essentially um that's it for the most part um you no know, freedom of movement i think you can meet one support bubble outside of your house but no going around different people's houses and hanging around you can obviously hang out outdoors if 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 you want in a cold but look at the map it makes me think, right, what is the point of having these tiers when everybody, this is for those listening on the audio version, it's a map of the UK, or it's a map of Great Britain, um, or it's a map of England, or UK, whatever, you know what I mean. Um, and most of the regions within the UK are like coloured in purple, which is to signify they're in tier four. And there's a few blobs of tier three around, right, with no no place in yellow, tier four, tier one. I think that might be Isle of Wight or something, right, but you can't see it maybe because it's too uh clear i don't know whatever but why not just make the whole country in tier four or have some sort of joint effort with scotland and the and the islands and place us all under the same sort of tier so that we can kind of have some level of control maybe limit the ins and outs in different parts of the of the 
of the nation as well that would make more sense wouldn't it like i really don't get this at the moment like i think more than what is it 73 percent or more than 73 or 78 percent of um the country is in tier four at the moment um there is no need for a tier three approach especially when there's people coming in and out of other tiers because that's what happened before i think they were saying right a lot of the places that are in tier one and tier two um and they were you know had the, the the neighboring places around them were in the higher tiers they had their residents coming coming over into their regions because obviously you can go to restaurants go to bars go to go do your shopping in those other places and you know it's covid so you've got nothing to do anyway so why not go on a little bit of a road trip so the the tier thing on paper makes sense because you can have a localized approach to dealing with the spread of covid right instead of putting the entire country into lockdown you can kind of focus your efforts into a specific region and maybe tailor made your tailor make your approach to how they are i don't know whatever right but in actual practice it's actually counterproductive because what happens is that the neighboring areas which are in higher tiers will inevitably want to go to those lower tiers to have some semblance of normality which they don't necessarily have or to enjoy the freedoms that those other tiers do have at the moment so it's a really counterproductive way again one step forward two steps back you know the standard sort of um noise and song and dance you hear concerning the Tory government when it comes to dealing with COVID and pff, what can you do really and it really is what can you do I'd, I'd rather again I'd rather we, we're not in anything I'd rather we will be able to go live our lives and do exactly what, what we please I, I think there is some sort of level of um, it's very unprecedented that the governments have basically stepped in and told us you know you can't earn a living in a certain sectors you're not allowed to enjoy certain, certain freedoms but we are where we are and if that is the case give us an end they haven't even given us an end date they haven't given us an idea of like hey once we do this we're gonna have an end date and i guess that i'll be okay with that if they said to us hey we're gonna do another lockdown but here's our end date here's a date that we're setting in stone as to or we're setting uh, you know yeah in stone to some extent as to the date that we want to open things back up again to some level right this is the date we're aiming for so you give everybody in the whole country something to aim for a target and even the most reckless uh, people are going to be like you know what let me maybe chill out with the house parties let me chill out with the bouncing around to different houses let me chill out with the tinder dates and let's just attack what we can attack as we are now as opposed to just you know trying to skirt the rules so that we can all have a better time when it comes to the summer because i'm willing to sacrifice my winter i'm willing to sacrifice my christmas even before the changes don't get me wrong but i'm willing to sacrifice my january february and march for a better you know um april may and june like more than happy to but don't just put us in lockdown and not give us any idea as to what the goals are what the target is do we have an actual number in mind of what we want to do like i don't know even the r number just say hey the target is for us to get our number under 1.1 by this date um you know and to get the majority of the country in tier three or in tier two whatever it may be that would be such a great way to go about things because that's the moment god almighty this is just horrendous like, it really is but you know hopefully now with the with the jab that they've got we can kind of finally get back to some semblance of normality because i don't know about you guys but i've had enough moving on we have some hilarious news courtesy of usa today um everyone's favorite or not so favorite um doctor on the whole podcast circuit especially the la comedian circuit especially you know the your mom's house crew dr drew has <laughs> tested positive for covid19 and the reason why it's funny is because he was one of the he was one of the loudest um critics and uh naysayers when it came to when it comes to the press or the media's coverage of covid now he might have had a point yeah i think the u.s um coverage of covid has been a little bit more um scaremongery than it has been in the uk we've obviously have some you know i think for the most part maybe because of how we approach things uk us people tend to be a little bit more boisterous a little bit more you know out there with everything even a sports analysis is a little bit more rah rah shouty shouty so that might just be a cultural thing who knows but um you did get the feeling especially with covid being turned political in the us with you know essentially the republicans saying open everything back up and let people just <laughs> fall as they may and then the democrats on their side telling everyone to stay in their bunkers um there was a there was just like more of a it, it was it was an ideological split it felt like as opposed to like a let's let's analyze the evidence see what's working best let's put way up all these different aspects that are playing that are coming into play and make some sort of reason decision it was mostly just a red and blue thing and it seemed like in my opinion from what it seemed like that drew was kind of leaning more to the red side yeah because he's just thinking it's scaremongery 
you're not you know you're, you're you're drumming up fear it's not it's not much than a common flu i don't think he may say common flu but he was basically giving that sort of assumption or alluding to that sort of thing then he was going on all these like you know um i'd say right wing mostly platforms and saying this sort of thing and at the time they were also espousing this sort of stuff as when trump was saying it wasn't such a big deal um and then i guess you could excuse him by saying that it was at that time but there was still enough evidence for somebody of his position especially considering the amount of people he speaks to and being a doctor too right you'd imagine he'd be a little bit more ideologically neutral in that respect he did have responsibility to be a little bit like hey even though i think this let's adjust judging by what the data says let's just do this and do that do you know I mean he could have a little bit more um, careful with these words but he was very very gun gung ho and shouty about the fact that he thought covid wasn't a big deal then of course you know the numbers start spiking and the us has you know crazy numbers now of cases right i don't even want to look at how much how many people have got covid and unfortunately have passed away it makes complete sense considering you know how different states have handled it um how people have basically you know d decided it's some sort of um deep state conspiracy it's just so much mess david to deal with just the issue itself that it just gets a little bit crazy but regardless the numbers are crazy and then dr drew didn't really he apologized begrudgingly right it took him a while to apologize and then when he did finally apologize he made it seem as if um the trolls on the internet had sort of like chased him off social media i remember he posted some weird video of him sitting in a cabin somewhere um you know um whispering into a camera which is really strange right he didn't really seem that repentive of how he kind of went about doing it and he, and and i think since then people have kind of um people have kind of distanced themselves somewhat a bit from him of course your mom's house crew have sort of like stuck with him but i even mentioned i saw um andrew um, andrew santino kind of call him out on it i think on one of his podcasts and basically his, you know call him out on his shit on how he sort of downplayed the whole thing which was quite refreshing to see but i think ever since then any hope of drew pinsky ever appearing on joe rogan with rap because i don't think joe rogan's ever been a fan of dr drew anyway and he's always kind of thrown out hints to like tom segura and stuff that he wants to be on the show but you know it's never happened and and since this whole thing transpired and he got made to like an absolute idiot um that's not gonna happen and of course now months after apologizing he's now got covid it's just hilarious again it's not no one's wishing any harm on the guy hopefully he recovers and he's well he's downplayed it enough so it shouldn't be that big of a deal right he should take all the necessary medicines and you'll be fine but it's just hilarious how um how sort of uh petty this virus seems to be the people that are the loudest detractors of it the people that sort of speak about it in the most boastful even trump fair enough he didn't you know have any not, nothing ex extremely tragic happened to him but he has changed his stance somewhat regarding covid he has sort of simmered down on the whole rah-rah talk maybe it's because you know he ended up eventually losing the election which he still disputes but he sort of calmed it down it has a it has a habit of sort of humbling people it feels like covid anyway this is the article here from usa today dr drew pinsky test positive for covid19 months after apologizing it says here after months of apologizing to Dan Plain, the coronavirus pandemic, celebrity Dr. Drew Pinsky has revealed he tested positive for the virus on Instagram post on Tuesday. Pinsky, 62, known as Dr. Drew, is seen in bed holding a bottle of electrolyte drink while his wife wears a face mask nearby. The caption noted his wife tested negative. He said Drew is home under surveillance and fever is down. Thanks, Dr. Zelenko, Dr. Yo, and um, Dr. Jeff for the superior care and advice. Drew is feeling better and will hopefully get well soon that's the irony of it, isn't it right he's telling everyone else that it shouldn't be a big deal but dr drew is an actual doctor he has you know people in the medical field uh, he has all this sort of background knowledge of what's going on so effectively if he gets covid his experience is going to be nothing like you or i right fair enough the statistics still say people within our age group let's say we're all under 50 or under 60 years old will be perfectly fine but still the, i think the recklessness that some of these people speak about kobe like i'm all right with you know that what was it is it the miami mayor is it miami yeah he's like come out of florida right he's basically said look i'm not closing down again i'm kind of okay with that stance because he's taking like a calculated guess because you know he's a mayor at the end of the day or a governor whatever it may be but a doctor's like you gotta relax <laughs> Oh, sorry, that bless you for that, but but yeah, look at him, man, sitting down, he's lying down in his bed, looking poorly as hell. Like God Almighty, how embarrassing! <laughs> so, but let's continue. So it continues. 
It said Andrew's home that in the following post, Penske appeared via video explaining he has taken a lot of good medication and thanked his fans for their support. He said, COVID is no fun. I don't, what is it in the caption or video? Oh, in the video. Okay, let's see what video that is because I haven't seen the actual video of him speaking about it, but let's see what he says himself. Okay, I think oh, he's made so many. He's making like diaries, right? I'm assuming, right? Here's him. What is he talking about here? How long is it? Two minute diary. COVID update. Thank you for your support. <laughs> what a mug. Hey everybody, Dr. Drew, thanks for uh, checking in on me. I appreciate all the uh, kind shout outs. Uh, COVID's no fun. I don't recommend it. But uh, I think he's ignoring a lot of the negative shout outs too. I think there's a lot of people that are taking a lot of joy in his misery at the moment. But hey, you've got to keep a positive outlook on things, isn't it? I'm sort of through the viral phase, which uh, is when virals, the virus is reproducing and uh, I took a lot of good medication to attack that early. We've got a lot of stuff we can do now. And uh, then got on some Decadron now that I'm in the inflammatory phase. My lungs are filling up and all that good stuff. But uh, and man, am I glad to get this now and not earlier in the course and we didn't have so much to do. Uh, I'm waiting on a monoclonal antibody infusion with Bamlanivinab. Hopefully I, I can get that. And if this thing resolves before I can get the infusion, so, so much the better. Um, it's interesting. Hey, Jason Waller. Hey, buddy. I um, put out on Twitter that I was uh, uh, thankful to get my, I was wishing for a COVID positive test because I had this terrible acute febrile illness and was testing negative. And if I did not have COVID, I had acute lymphocytic leukemia which I did not want to have because that's the only thing that would do uh, what was happening. Yeah, great justification there, isn't it, Dr. Drew? Anyway, move back to the article. It continues. Uh, he said, so uh, people who recover from COVID-19 are believed to acquire at least one lasting immunity against the disease as their bodies produce a protective antibodies and immune systems memory. But evidence remains limited. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, the, the funny thing. Oh, okay. This actually, it says here in the article, uh, in April, Pinsky apologized for a series of statements unspoiled um, in a video in which he downplayed a virus and suggested it was a press-induced panic, right? This was in April. This wasn't even like in February. In April, he was sticking his neck out saying, this is a hoax. It's like, what? <laughs> and if you want any proof about that, this is a great video someone put together um, on Twitter that basically compiled a lot of his greatest hits when he was sort of downplaying the whole thing. And I'm going to play it now because why not? It's funny, isn't it? Worse than the flu. It's way less virulent than the flu. So it's a reminder that you're more likely to die of influenza. So go ahead and get your flu shots. Mild. Doesn't hurt anybody. That should be the headline. Way less serious than influenza. That's the headline. I know what the 2% lethality thing is you have there. Are you talking about the coronavirus? I think it's less than 2%. And I recognize the irony of myself sneezing and blowing my nose as we're listening to, to Drew to quote a thingy. He's a virus. But trust me, I have allergies. This isn't anything else. 0.02%. Less dangerous than influenza. Less dangerous than influenza. Um, your probability of dying from coronavirus much higher being hit by an asteroid, I would say. The flu virus in this country is vastly more consequential, and nobody is talking about it. Oh, this Jesus Christ. It is, it is a press induced panic. I am angry about it. It is the flu. If you're. Imagine following up somebody on the station telling you it doesn't worry me at all. It should worry you somewhat that this new virus that comes out of nowhere is taking out large swaths of the populations. Well, not large, but, you know, considerable amount, right? And people that you would actually care for, right? People that you would actually miss. Because all this idea that, oh, they're just old, it's okay, they can kind of, you know, fall by the wayside isn't nonsense, isn't it? Don't you people have grandparents or parents or people that you'd love down over the age of 60? Or, or is everybody pretending that they're sort of a member of some sort of hype house or whatever it may be that all their friends happen to be under the age of 24 this is just a mad like again fair enough it's america so it's a hard it's a difficult thing to even address over there because there's so many layers and so many things attached to it i don't think the black lives matter protest helped either with the protest with the whole um how people kind of accepted the science from with uh, uh, relating to covid i don't think that helped things i think people are like you know sensible people are like thinking hold on if if covid is real why are all these people outside protesting right why are my businesses locked down why don't why does my restaurant go out of business and these people are allowed to smash up the cnn you know building whatever it may be i think people are kind of you know and then i think that sort of set in motion and then you got proud boys you've got the q on on thing you've got people getting cancelled online there's loads of things that just happen at the same time that i think people well naturally skeptical i can understand it but again i'm saying that he this isn't some random person online this isn't some random guy on a reddit forum this is a legit doctor who's meant to be 
advising you and providing some sort of impartial neutral um you know advice um due to you know based on his learnings based on his education based on his experience and based on the data and the science that's available so you can make an informed choice he can't force you to do anything but him sort of imbued imbuing his own person his own sort of like um ideologies into it his own personality whatever it may be is just that's why probably these personality these personalities personality um driven tv doctors are problematic in that way in it because everything's like a show even their responses end up being quite overly dramatic for the sake of it, it doesn't really need to be right you're a doctor you just need to kind of call what are the cold hard facts here are the options here's what i've analyzed here's what's the here's the research that's out there at the moment make a decision based on what's available bloody blah, blah 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 but all this other stuff like you know it's just wild like going on these talk talking head shows and what adding to the confusion it's just unnecessary you're under 65 and you get it you're gonna have the flu and you're gonna be fine oh my it's God. gonna be just like the flu and there's been a number of people who passed away, right? A number, not even a small amount. There's been a number of people, especially in America, that have unfortunately passed away due to complications with COVID. Now, it hasn't been, the data has been annoying because there's not been a direct thing, but come on. It's going to be almost identical. Oh I, I can see it God. coming. Americans in 2020 panic is toilet paper. Right. Antibacterial gel. Right. In, in response to the flu, right? A flu. And it's a different flu. And it's, if you notice, it's Corona-19, which means there's at least been 18 of these other ones. Oh, yeah. Go to the movies. Why do you think, like, the, the NBA now discussing the idea of playing without fans? And UCLA today announcing that their sports are going to be without fans. I, I, think that's a, I think that's a mistake. Should the Olympics be canceled? That's funny. <laughs> Have you noticed yeah. less people out on the streets? Oh, absolutely. The less people in, in the trains, for sure. Well, they, they told them, uh, de Blasio told them not to ride the trains. And right. So they're not riding the trains. And, and so I am. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Say we do have 100,000 deaths in the country. Remember, we get 30,000 deaths from the flu. This is going to be, we predicted from the beginning that this is going to be worse than the flu. So we'd have to at least have 30,000 deaths for it to be worse than the flu. Exactly. But do we wait till 20,000 people die and then start panicking? It's not going to happen. Okay. That's the point. It's not. Jesus Christ, Dr. Drew, man. What an absolute donut. Again, we'll hope he gets well soon in it, all that malarkey, but what an absolute idiot. It is what it is, isn't it? You live by the sword, you die by the sword, you put out your opinion in that way, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't pay off, and I guess in this respect, it definitely has not paid off. Moving on, moving on, moving on. What do we have here? What do we have here? Yes, so interesting news. Um, obviously, you guys are aware Brexit has been approved, right? We are out of the EU, meaning the UK, and there have been some interesting things attached to it. Things that you probably I hadn't actually thought about. Things concerning Erasmus, um, mobile data roaming when you go to the EU countries, and other stuff that's basically going to be impacted via this ruling. And one of the things that is going to be impacted is maybe your ability to see your favorite act play right your favorite act perform in a club perform at a festival um perform a show is going to be greatly affected by these new regulations that are coming in with brexit and essentially what is basically being said is that they are now going to require obviously people coming in to the uk to basically have a visa and i guess vice versa if you're a uk um, artist and you're going or uk based artist and you're going out to go and earn your living on the road and stuff you're going to need to have to apply for a visa either via the promoter is going to have to pay for it for you or you're gonna to have to fork out the money yourself to go and play in these various locations which again is severely going to hinder and hamper i guess the people i would say in the kind of bottom to the lower middle bracket of the djing and kind of entertainment perf um, industry and scene people who are just about getting their name kind of ringing out they're sort of doing local tours maybe four city tours a couple of a couple of weekends here and there every month but people who essentially need to go out and venture out and kind of get garner new fans play in front of new people um and just explore whatever they can in their music they're going to be greatly affected by it because you'd imagine the kind of top of the tier djs aren't necessarily going to be affected by us at all because that the cost will be definitely offset by the via the promoter 
via their booking agency, whatever it may be. So it's really, really um, disheartening news. But of course, there's a solution here, which is going to be good um, if you guys want to take part in this. Because basically, it's regarding um, this is courtesy of Resident Advisor. It says UK artists are petitioning the government for visa free travel across the EU. It says nearly 200 people have signed a petition demanding visa free travel throughout the European Union for UK based artists, which is going to be amazing and professional. Set up by a video director, Tim Brennan. The online petition specifically requests that a UK government negotiate a free cultural work permit to allow UK based professionals to perform in the EU states. It comes just days after the UK is due to leave the EU single market and customs union. So again these positions sometimes can be a little bit shaky right um they can do they can kind of create some discourse but they don't actually create any actionable change but i think this is going to be something that i feel is going to gain a bit of traction just because of how many people is going to be affected and the amount of money that's going to be lost as well ultimately because the only thing these guys tend to care about when it comes to um rewriting or maybe addressing sort of the ills of whatever legislation has been passed through so definitely keep an eye on it and if you want to sign it i'll put the link below in the description for you guys to check out it continues it says once the uk ends its current brexit transition period artists will face further hardships when trying to tour in the eu on the professional basis with the potentially each country asking for its own visa that would be valid for only one trip right which is crazy because most of the time if you know some of your best teachers especially during the summer m summer months are traveling sometimes the same location three or four times in a month at least so you can imagine the costs that are going to incur when that's sort of happening I'm, I'm sure people will get around it but maybe do more land travel or whatever it may be land transport i don't know where it may be but for the most part if you just want to do things kosher there's going to be a lot of work involved a lot of money spent just to get you on the stage let alone to get you out there um continues having amassed more than 190,000 signatures including alexander and that arm unit surgeon and strategy the petition will now be considered for debate in parliament also to see this morning tim brennan tweeted that he has meeting scheduled today december 30th to discuss a petition I sign a petition below and read some responses from the electronic music community below so you see our responses from tony surgeon um bonka got slow dive the band talking here strategy you got disclosures talking about it so again i'll link it down below if you guys to check out um sign a petition get involved you want to see your favorite act perform in your favorite venue in the uk or in the eu or you just want to see them tour and earn a living because streaming sucks then definitely sign the petition get involved sign a petition allow these artists just to put this forward so artists can travel um visa free throughout the eu because it's going to be a tough tough time um you know post brexit you know you're already seeing the changes are already going to be happening with erasmus and you know i don't think they've even announced what the replacement of erasmus is going to be or provide any details so just imagine what they're going to do if we sort of let this lay by the wayside so definitely get involved sign a petition don't delay sign a petition today moving on we have another um disheartening news courtesy of the dance music community a uh, very well-known uh, palestinian techno dj um has been arrested it looks like for putting together a pretty cool looking party uh, DJ Samo who I think you guys should be familiar with uh, due to the work or due to what did she do oh, remember that iconic DJ set she did a boiler room right really famous DJ like you know played an amazing set I'm gonna say it was somewhere in in, in Palestine too and um, it kind of got a lot of reaction got a lot of traction and I'm guessing boosted her profile out just to get booked in many different places um, another kind of illustration of the good that boiler room can do and a lot of people have a lot of bad things to say about boiler room but you know in terms of providing a platform for people that haven't necessarily played in front of big audiences or have had their sort of sound be you know showcased in front of those audiences and had the ears and the eyes of the industry looking because i think I think I would hazard a guess that as, as many people as there are fans watching Boiler Room, there is as many people in the industry, you know, agents, uh, booking managers, wherever they may be, who are also checking those things out and probably just doing the standard thing, looking at the recent uploads and seeing how many views each one gets and then basically reaching out to the artist and saying, hey, do you want to sign up to my agency or I can get you play booked here and there and there. So I'm sure it definitely changes people's lives for the better going forward. But this is, uh, oh, it's kind of, oh, it's blocked, it's paywalled it. But anyway, the headlines so there it's a palestinian techno queen arrested for holding a rave at a party at moses burial site um it says here a rave party at the muslim um holy site in the west bank has led to several arrests including of leading dj sama abdul hadid and promoted prompted the palestinian authorities to launch a commission inquiry of inquiry um after the event sparked sharp criticism among palestinians dozens of young palestinians from the east jerusalem um ramallah 
and Bethlehem attended the party on Saturday night at the Nabi Musa, where, according to Muslim belief, the Prophet Muhammad was buried. So again, I can't read the entire thing, but that's basically the gist of it. And they've put up a petition, which is, I think, achieved um, its aim, I think, at the moment. Yeah. Okay, it's close to achieving it. It's about 77,000 uh, at the moment. Uh, they're looking for 150,000 um, signatures, obviously, to get the attention of the world authorities and, of course, eventually get her released out of prison. So it says they called for immediate release of Sama Abdul Adid. It says the following call for immediate release of Sama, of Sama Abdul Adid. It says, uh, We, the undersigned, call for the immediate release of Palestinian artist who was illegally detained by the Palestinian Authority on the 27th December. On Tuesday, 29th December, a judge decided to extend her detention for 15 additional days because techno music is not part of Palestinian heritage, which is crazy. And again, we take things for so, we take things, like I said before, we take it for granted, really, and especially in the UK, especially in London, the access and the range of music cells and and just things that we can go to attend on every given weekend and you know just look over in these countries in the middle east where you know there's an appetite for it quite clearly look at the videos that they do in boiler room in these places you look at the stuff that they've done i think innovation did something as well did a loss in a moment someone in the middle east too there's definitely an appetite for this music a scene out there that's you know being done on the underground on the sly kids having to do stuff after hours behind closed doors um incognito and all that good stuff right and if they're caught cool, the consequences are grave right they are stern real life consequences that could change a complete course of their career or their lives in general right this is real life and death situation so again you know it's all well and good you know complaining about lineups at festivals and stuff but at least we have them do you know what I mean at least we're able to go to them we don't have to jump over hoops or you know be escorted by an army or something right it's just, it's just yeah crazy to think in it um again uh, the rest of summer occurred after the attack on a private recording for a stream performance the Nabi Musa in Jericho by a group of young people who stopped the event and threatened the attendees. This attack was followed by a vicious campaign of misinformation on social media which fueled the violent reactions and personal attacks against Sama. So I'm assuming there's probably footage of this, right? I'm assuming. Probably like a live stream bit of footage and the thing kind of cuts out. That must be gnarly to watch. The site um, Maki sorry makam makam nabi in musa is under the custody of palestinian ministry of tourism who gave written approval to the organize and film the concert in the baza site not in the mosque which is part of the site see they gave permission and they took it away these corrupt officials the ministry was aware of the type of music that would be played at the concert techno and there was a concert will be filmed for the archaeological site featuring sam abdul adid one of the leading arab women in techno music in the world to promote palestinian heritage sites and palestinian techno music amongst music audiences around the world again credit to her too because i don't know her citizenship i don't know what her ability to move around the country is but after that performance on boiler room you would assume someone like her would you know it'd make more sense that she'd move to like i don't know zurich paris berlin london set up a label um an agency i don't know have a residency in a certain club and just live that sort of life but she's kind of if I if again looking from the outside, I haven't really followed her career too too sharply, but it seems like she's actually doubled down and really planted her feet in the soil and did her very best to promote whatever local scene that they have out there, shine more light, and essentially bring the brands and the live streaming and all that sort of stuff to their location to essentially open up her little community to the world right which is a, a really good thing to say about a woman because again she could have easily just left and kind of left it behind and just got all billy big balls and started moving around with all the popular techno dj girls out there but no she said no nah, i'm gonna i'm gonna stick i'm gonna stick in my home country and um, where i'm born where i'm from and do the best that i can to cultivate this scene even though the you know the surroundings and the climate around me isn't really conducive to the songs or to the culture that I'm sort of trying to promote, like it's very very admirable. Honestly, I have to I have to be honest. Super 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 admirable. Um, let's continue. To, uh, hold on. Why is it doing that for? Why is it always doing that? There you go. Cool. So that's nice working, right? It's working now. Yeah, it's working now. Okay, so um, Samuel, the lead organizer and the concert may have um, realized that the type of music was unsuitable for the site and its historical, religious, and cultural associations. Yet it remains that the Ministry of Tourism bears full responsibility for taking the decision to allow the concert to take place. Samuel, the deed is being made a scapegoat and held accountable for the crime that did not happen and one that she certainly did not commit. 
even though the Palestinian Authority has announced that it established a committee to investigate the events following the public uproar, until this moment we have received only silence from officials. In addition to the illegal arrest of an artist without any disclosure of the details of the investigation, the PA's detention of Sama Abdul Deed to tame the public anger is an official evasion of responsibility, hiding behind Sama instead of confronting the legal crisis and accepting responsibility. We call for immediate release and respect for culture and artistic freedom and rights by the Palestinian Authority. So again i'll put this change petition in my description so you can go and sign it definitely get involved sign 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 support the cause support the cause immediate release of sam abdul deed because this is insane um but again be thankful for what you have be thankful for whatever scene you have um that allowed you to move around and celebrate in with some level of freedom um you know because people are facing far stricter and sterner conditions than you are um you know again she could and it says a lot about her character i'm just really impressed you know as a person so again hopefully she's um released very very soon hopefully she's released very very soon okay what else do we want to talk about here Pew, 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 pew. Oh, this is interesting. So, uh, it's, you know, obviously, most of you are aware that, you know, um, with COVID happening, you know, um, public gatherings and parties and the likes are somewhat banned in most locations in Western Europe. But there are those people who exist, you know, mostly, you know, YouTube influencers, TikTok stars who have essentially decided that um, COVID doesn't exist in their world. They essentially hire around the clock um, doctors to come in and nurses to administer COVID tests to them so that they can go about partying and living their merry lives. And in theory, it sort of makes sense because for the most part, most of these people are under the age of 50 right for the most part maybe under the age of even 25 so it's very unlikely COVID is going to affect them in any sort of meaningful um, life of death sort of way they can kind of get around it and skirt most of the issues and if they ensure that the people they're hanging around with have been tested and they're all negative then in theory it should be okay but for everybody else we're sort of having to um, do our fun activities with groups of people in secret right um under the uh, you know um away from social media for the most part most of my friends i know online who have kind of gone outside and been social and done their thing are basically doing it very slightly um they're not posting about it too much if they are they're uploading the one clip here and there but essentially no one's kind of proud of the fact that they're going out they just know that they're doing it because it's a need right it's kind of you know we're social creatures we need to go and see other people so they're just kind of scratching that itch as much as they can and keeping it moving but this idea of kind of gloating and shoving in people's faces as these influencers are doing no one's doing that but i always have i've been wondering even for the ones who are doing it like you know whatever undercover how are they even finding these things because i know from when the world was open and things were okay um i'd kind of find out about warehouse parties via certain facebook groups and um maybe some sometimes read subreddit for subreddits and whatsapp groups as well private ones uh, telegram you find some information but you had to kind of go out first of all um, build a little contact list and then build relationships over time and then you know you'd kind of get let into the inner circle but of course with that aspect of sort of cultivating um, a network of friends completely cut off right you can't go out and just talk to people now you're kind of at home um, for the most part how are people doing it and then i guess it made sense that the way they were doing it was via this app that apple has pulled from their um, app store um so it's the following headline here it says um apple pulls iphone app promoting secret parties during covid19 pandemic vibe together right amazing right and it's got a picture here of diana ross from studio 54 which is quite funny considering the the, the logo is funny just because Studio 54 was like the most um exclusive exclusive and also no it wasn't inclusive it was the most exclusive of clubs that existed right the club that sort of invented the velvet rope um the club that sort of purported to be a club for the people but essentially just turned into another uh, glorified celebrity hangout um it's sort of been lionized over time but you know it wasn't it didn't really kind of it did contribute i guess to the overall um clubbing landscape of new york and the world for a brief period of time but in terms of the idea of like enjoying a party and having a hell of a great time it was a place that was kind of only um sort of you know promoted to the rich and the famous so it's just funny that they're using that you know picture from that era as a way to promote this app but hey we could digress so it says an ios app called vibe together 
um, that promoted private parties during COVID-19 pandemic has been removed from the Apple App Store. Had its account on TikTok banned and scrubbed most of its online presence. Interesting, right? The app's creators told Verge that Apple was the one to take it off the App Store. So I'm guessing they're doing a bit of um, damage limitation because all these um, annoying as well, they've been annoying during COVID, all these kind of annoying, woke um tech journalist again i didn't know this stuff existed prior because i wasn't online so much i was how's i live my life now that i'm stuck indoors i'm noticing all this junk that's online that i'm kind of getting involved with this drama but there's a these group of um, journalists that exist right that are essentially hell-bent on sort of showing or highlighting the ugly side of silicon valley the ugly side of startups and the whole tech industry and they kind of you know they're espousing or i guess they're sort of pushing this narrative that it's a bit of a boys club they want to promote diversity inclusivity um they want things to be more transparent no dirty deals they kind of abide by that old google mantra of don't be evil bloody blah, blah, blah even though google doesn't say it anymore because you know they're technically turned into one of the most evilest people out there but hey we digress so it, it's, it's a bit annoying the coverage but hey it is what it is and I an iOS app called duh, 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 duh. yeah um, vibe together build itself out on TikTok and its website as a place to organize and attend underground parties using the tagline get your rebel on get your party on organizers would have to approve everyone who wanted to attend and those who got approved would receive addresses two hours before the event most of these gatherings would have been illegal under the current US pandemic restrictions which may explain why the app required you to submit a profile to approval before you were allowed in so kind of similar to stuff that I've kind of used prior when the world was open right you'd kind of usually you'd get like um it usually would be like an instagram page with nothing on it it'd be like maybe they'll be uploading stuff via the stories only they'll post a flyer then they'll say get in contact you contact them through obviously your personal instagram they'll be able to check your profile make sure if it's private you opened it up for a brief period of time or you allow them to follow you and then from then they'll, they'll tell you to text a certain number you text that number and then from texting the number you then go to another maybe a telegram group or something and then via by the time you've gone through all those sort of hoops you end up at a place where someone will usually just send you a postcode um, and that's where you get a zip code postcode like an hour or so before the event and then you sort of turn up and that's how you basically get to the party but it was a quite a drawn out process but again just to even find the instagram pages was a hard thing so you kind of had to be in a no so i think this app had a lot of <laughs> had a lot of potential to be honest didn't it it kind of it was all in-house all on one place and you know it was easy to kind of navigate i'm, I'm assuming um there's some screenshots of the app itself a list of private parties on one screen one screen showing the rebel section which shows a team trendies when okay, the event squad vibes with the horrendous pictures of people att again some of these pictures of people attending these parties you don't want to be anywhere i guess these are all pictures from studio 54 but you know the people that would use this sort of thing you probably don't want to hang around with them i'm assuming like all these parties are saying all these la influencers like they look pretty terrible you know the last thing you want to be the no one want to catch COVID because they went to a Jake Paul party, for instance, right? As great as that guy is and what he's doing with his career and how he's sort of reinventing himself, like, that's probably the worst place you'd want to, you know, say you uh, <laughs> potentially caught a uh, life alterating uh, viral disease that you might pass on to your grandparents. But again, we digress. Calling a phone number on Vibe Together site connected with The Verge um, with somebody who identified themselves as Albin, one of the app's co-founders. They said that the app had been a few, had a few thousand users, not too bad considering um, it's only been around for a little bit, and that a few thousand additional applicants had requested access to the app since its company started putting videos on TikTok. Again, great promotion. So I think um, that's where a lot of the sort of um, I'm seeing a lot of sort of um, nostalgic rave clips being put up on TikTok. People are doing that because it gets a lot more traction than maybe Twitter because everyone's seen the same in videos of like Tomorrowland or whatever it may be. So that's great promotion on that regard. It said applying involves submitting your Instagram handle and uploading pictures of you partying to the service presumably to make sure that you weren't somebody who was going to spill the beans about the events such as that taylor lorenz woman who is you know essentially the golden snitch of the tech scene <laughs> vibe together largely there she is largely had a low profile before today although it was mentioned in the one of the event bright invitation to a new york party in september it received wider exposure after the new york times reporter taylor lorenz snitched of course <laughs> so screenshots of the website and described the app so she said look at her she comes after every this like i didn't know this lady again what, what was she doing prior to covering tech people like amazing and it tell her friends some terrible people built an app for finding and promoting covid use unsafe use covid unsafe large indoor house parties and they're using tiktok to market to millions again maybe the use is different 
the numbers are insane so i do get the sensitivity to people sort of like skirting the rules and putting other people in danger is different but still you know chill out um but hey whatever she's a journalist i guess she's got to do it got to do and she says yeah they're currently in the midst of promoting a secret new york rages event in nyc now the thing that i'm thinking even with these exposures like do they really think it's going to ch it's going to actually stop these parties actually happening they're still happening for sure they've definitely got a discord uh private text thing something going on that they're sort of communicating with it's new year's eve man like people don't just let that day go by in it they're gonna do whatever they can who those who are hell bent on partying are gonna find a way so this is a video here let's play it and see them well it, hopefully it's not got copyright music Ali rocks in my green team. okay i guess people hanging around the flyers look the, the flyers if the flyer was an indication of how bad a party would be i think that would be it it says what's this the golden trap eden nye 2021 invitation only but yeah whatever um any party that's promoted on tiktok you probably shouldn't be going but it continues and vibe together has now removed the faq page acknowledge the danger of the pandemic but it said the app was designed to promote small gatherings of course it's small like only 150 18 year olds that's small um because technically 50 18 year olds are smaller than 25 year olds isn't it technically, uh, smaller gatherings of people from different households can still spread the coronavirus creating a chain of infection da, da, da. in a statement to the verge spokesman denied the app was intended to promote unsafe behavior of course they were they said vibe together was a maximum viable product designed to help to give help other people organize a small to get togethers in parks or apartments during covid the spokesperson said we never hosted any large parties we made Made one over the top marketing video that left a wrong impression about our intentions which has been since taken down we don't condone large ones of gatherings yeah 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 but anyway even if it would have survived it would have ended up much like things like house party do you remember whenever whenever a lockdown was announced especially in the uk i'm not sure about you guys whenever a lockdown was announced house party app would always be trending on twitter so people were basically saying oh you know whenever the economy would open up house party is dead and whenever it kind of closed down again house party kind of re, uh, resurfaced so i think the same would have occurred to this vibe together app i think once the world opened up again and you were able to go to actual nightclubs why would there be a need for you to organize these covid safe raves i think the last place anyone wants to be at once things go back to normal is their own homes they want to be anywhere but that people are going to be probably eating dinner out in restaurants flipping for six months straight right monday to friday so i can just imagine what they're going to be doing with clubs so it probably only had a little a short um shelf life in any way in general and um, it continues says it's unknown whether the app substance substantially contributed to people um holding unsafe events or they promoted gatherings every weekend including an upcoming new year's eve party and tiktok video the vibe together app had only 25 ratings before being removed and its instagram page had uh, under 1000 followers but still active members not just like you know filled up with bots they actually went and did the hard work like getting 1000 people to actually follow an app about putting to because again these secret party things aren't you know it's not the thing that you want to boast about it's a taboo subject uh, matter so to get 1000 people to follow an instagram page for an app that's essentially illegal is pretty good man pretty good in a statement to the verge tiktok said the account on that platform had only 139 followers when it was removed the app appears to have launched previously under the name trendies and they mentioned a now largely empty instagram page vibe to Get's website also had vibes at vibe house for the 2021 zamla festival music festival event in tulu mexico again another event another location where all the playgraves are going or the playgrave djs are going anyway so whenever you see them if you see any footage of your favorite you know of your favorite dj mag dj go playing in somewhere it's definitely going to be totally in the next couple of weeks or maybe ecuador where Ari Shafiri is at uh, we continue it said uh, the house pictures con correspond to an airbnb listing for a rental called the casa remy villa however the listing manager couldn't confirm the existence of the five house event to verge he said um, we have rented the villa to some influencers said the owner who said he had no idea the rentals were like to the app he said that but they know parties aren't allowed of any kind as it's forbidden by authority during the pandemic with the risk of shutting down the property and a huge fine the airbnb host also notes that the zamna festival was recently put postponed to april not the january dates listed on the website vibe together's instagram account now contains a single text post that says by proportion by media it reads we know we don't condone large gatherings so again it's funny because it, it sounds like an app like the nelt boys would make right or somebody associated with jake paul people that are basically saying covid is fake they, they would basically make an app like this again disappointed that they're sort of like adopting this whole like oh we didn't promote right? but i think if you're gonna do an app for illegal parties during a pandemic just double down and just do what you do and stick to your guns 
don't then buck on the depression of journalists and sort of pretend that you're something else that you're actually not you know what you're doing um but it's also f interesting to see like you know these um yeah these uh scorned uh tech journalists like toy lorenz making it her mission to sort of like call out any 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 misstep that she sees in the scene um interesting to see but again i think it shows good entrepreneurial spirit from the vibe together founders man i think regardless of what happens they're probably going to land on their feet they're going to probably figure something out and um, going forward because this is a pretty decent idea in my opinion But, 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 yeah, it's a pretty decent idea, man. It's a pretty, pretty decent idea. I'm not going to lie. Not going to lie. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. What else do we have here? 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 Oh, okay, we have this. This is pretty good. So, um, Caribou um electronic music artist and sometimes dj remixer um announced on social media just the other day actually that he was uh, allegedly offered a huge amount of money to play a virtual uh dj set i'm guessing live stream from these humble abode for a company for their new year's eve party which is pretty insane now it might be a thing that they suggested that he do the thing of a zoom so essentially he kind of rigged up his system and played it via zoom so that people could party in their own homes but i would assume most kind of you know these a place that would offer a dj 40 grand to play anywhere like that would probably have the event themselves um with their staff in a building somewhere covid secure test everybody make sure everyone's negative then you come in the next day and party or the same day and go and party and then have the dj play wherever they may be because you just reduce on the flights of tickets and whatever maybe because you know i'm assuming just getting the person over to play during these tough times is going to be a cost an arm and a leg and maybe putting them up is going to be difficult so you just pay them to live stream wherever they are and with a prevalence of all these little studios popping up like pirate you could probably just play or set in there record it live stream it directly directly there sorry um behind the paywall or behind whatever gated platform they have and it's pretty much done but it did it did sort of spark some interesting debate again on techno twitter because you know djs on twitter are um are weird isn't it they're a little bit wacky <laughs> that, that's what you got to say they're a little bit wacky because i thought it was pretty innocent like tweet because it kind of you know number one maybe showed I wouldn't say naive, I wouldn't say naivety, but it did show Caribou sort of like um uh uh did show his kind of desire to maybe virtual signal some bit because it didn't make no sense to even share this bit of news. And I don't know why you wouldn't accept a gig at this you know, in this in the current economy that we're in the current conditions that we're in at the moment, knowing how the economy is, knowing that most likely the events sector, um, the hospitality industry is probably gonna be the last thing to open right even with the vaccine it would make more sense that you would probably again maybe if this was april fair enough do your whole virtual signaling thing when everyone was chastising play great djs but in december when you know you've probably been what surviving off the sales of stuff on Bandcamp and people's good graces contributing to streams or whatever it may be i'm watching anyone's pockets i would imagine no one will turn down 40 grand not not even nina kravitz not even peggy goo right these people are all going to accept an extra four grand 40 grand coming at them from uh no mark flipping private company that you'll never hear of again you'll play the set and no one ever gets to see it right um and no one will ever know either so it, it doesn't really make much sense to display it but again i think it's that kind of whole um prev it's that kind of whole uh it's that whole uh need to kind of seem just and virtuous online especially in spite especially as a contrast to people who have kind of been you know disparaged somewhat online for being the complete opposite and being a bit greedy and money hungry and essentially taking up all the resources and money again q nina kravitz q a peggy goo and these other people out there who have been continually touring throughout the entire pandemic which has been quite hilarious to see from the outside looking in but anyway this is it Mm, is it there can you see it yep can you see it right there so this is a caribou's tweet here it says i was just offered four jesus christ yeah this is it, isn't it? yeah this is it this is it oh let me go there sorry about that boom 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 yep yeah this is it so so the following 
Um, I was just offered 40k to DJ virtually for a private company on New Year's Eve. Hey corporates, looking at the world right now, can't think of a better use of your slush fund than pissing up a wall so your pampered staff can watch an overpaid DJs prance around the low and miss virtual party of all time. Now again, like I guess maybe because he does, because I think listening to it might have been one of those pioneer documentaries that are talking about the, the, the pandemic and the effects of it and they interviewed various people within the dance music scene djs promoters bloody blah, blah 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 and i remember listening to honey dijon and she was pretty downbeat about it all right she was like oh i'm not really feeling inspired i don't really feel like playing i don't really feel like making tunes whatever it may be she's just feeling a little bit meh because of what's happening in the world and of course being american the racial tensions that have happened that have kind of occurred post george floyd's untimely death at the hands of the police so it's kind of a weird time to some somehow g yourself up to smile prance around in front of a camera on a webcam at home mixing and kind of pretend to yourself that everything's okay when you know it isn't so i can definitely see that being a thing and again i don't know if caribou is american or if he has any ties to america so maybe it's affecting his thing but I, it just seems like a weird thing to say in public um at this moment in time when quite possibly even if you're being altruistic right and you wanted to give the money away you could just accept the gig and then do all the charity you wanted post the event right and probably not even announce how you got the money anyway because that would maybe make people then question the other things you've done in the, um you've done without kind of you know uh announcing it to everybody but you don't number one owe anyone an explanation and also in general you know these events and these have these happenings with these large corporate companies are going to be are going to occur regardless of you kind of going out there and what shaming them online these corporate events i'm assuming a lot of i assume there's definitely a sector of djs that exist out there who is who are kind of you know live and die via these gigs because they overpay and i even hear stand-up comedians always say it. they do corporate events they're completely horrible to do because you know they they pretend like they want to hear comedy comedy but when you get up on stage and you actually do stand-up comedy and you may be mildly offensive and you take the piss a little bit you can maybe upset the wrong people and it can completely dead the entire crowd so you can imagine just what it might be like right you're going to do a stand-up show for like a sales team and there's a really um two or three strong strong personalities who don't necessarily get spoken to in that manner or in that way that shape or form at all and you do a joke and it kind of lays goes flat or it's a little bit cutting a little bit too to, a little bit too close to the truth you can imagine how quickly the atmosphere can completely change and it, no, it's not a fun time right no one wants to be embarrassed or felt or made to feel like a fraud for going to go and perform places and it, you feel it a lot when you're I, I, again maybe it's just me but i think most sensible people you feel a little bit of a fraud when you go play somewhere and you get paid a high amount and you're you know you've played for like an hour you've done you've done a set you've done before plenty of times with your eyes closed and you kind of feel a bit guilty for taking their money but hey you know they've hired you for a gig you just keep it moving but when these corporate events come around people don't never, never feel guilty for them they just do them because it's a needs must isn't it they're going to essentially pay for your rent or your mortgage or your kid's school for the next couple of months or whatever it may be so why not take the money and put it to good use or again like i'm saying if you're going to be charitable you could there's so much good you could do with that money to um essentially uh have it affect more people as opposed to just putting up a tweet and getting a few likes off of strangers like myself um and of course the um and again the, the the responses have been interesting right you got here next time for the email to me of course he'd play it says geez my teachers don't even earn 40k a year should be hired a few to do that um to shared wealth hide uh high tide floats all boats and all that uh, he says i'm waiting to come and donate the money to folk and they could just stick it on the place on spotify again stupid idea terrible idea that's why you don't have your own business and then somebody here says um the answer is what Fug what would fagazi do the only band that could to be offered 10 million by atlantic record and turn it down so i think caribou did the right thing blood money is blood money good for you what are you talking about blood money you don't even know what the company is right it could be a it could be owned by the it could be a family company that is i don't know making the most man, mundane thing in the world why should it be it's just a bullshit way to look at things and he says i also like the well, what would forgazi do test not that i can claim to be his pass on this occasion he says take the cash and donate it he said yes i do find this compelling argument in some ways and i have done this in the past i've never done corporate gigs but this is other money that i've received via usage of my music um i'm guess I'm suggesting that there is a bigger problem that just won't than this one absurd offer. It's absurd, but is it really? This is why sometimes I you have to appreciate the people like the Nina Kravitz and the Peggy Goose and stuff, right? As much as I don't like how 
you know, lacking in moral fiber they seem to be, right? They'll just stand in front of anything. Like, again, I, I think it's a bad thing. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't ever be a person that would necessarily, shouldn't, <sighs> bad to say this, but you get the feeling they would play literally anywhere if you pay them, right? And you don't ever want to be that person, right? You don't want to be that person where your name and your likeness can be essentially bought for any price. But there, there has come, there has to come a moment where you're able to somehow, because I think that's the essence of punk, right? That's the essence of like not selling out is your ability to take money from the corporations and somehow have it funnel back down to the underground and to people on the actual grassroots that's the key to it like this whole idea behind being punk and not selling records and keeping it true and you know eating beans on toast all the time is insane especially during a global pandemic when your actual normal revenues of income right that you would kind of rely on going to festivals going gigs remixing albums you know uh, mixing stuff for people producing things is completely off the table or is somehow diminished or lowered during these times that would make complete sense to have this sort of idealistic um virtue signaling kind of um stance to make complete sense because you've got other bits of income coming in but when that sort of dries up it, it would make sense especially again maybe he doesn't have a family that probably helps things if you're just single you can kind of move a little bit more wild like this but it would make more sense if you just would be a little bit more willing to compromise and be like, okay cool at this moment in time i wouldn't accept this any other moment but let me accept this money so it can allow me to continue doing the art that my fans know and love um without compromise um without having to maybe dabble in getting a full-time job because you know if he wants to go spec that money out for six months or so, i don't know whatever it may be whatever covers his nut and you're still fine but this whole like i'm gonna do it for the culture do it for the scene cool you got a few likes online but your account is still not 40k richer in it that's just like an insane thing to do um again maybe i'm wrong in that regard but i think moving in silence is a is a is definitely uh a virtue it's definitely something people should maybe ascribe to as, or you know aspire to move like and also the idea that hey man situations change maybe your idealistic way of looking at things should change according to it as well again that's just my opinion okay moving on 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 what else do we have here why is it always doing that? i don't know why it does that sometimes so you'll move it right and then it'll just not do the switch anymore i don't know why that happens i wonder if it's just like a thing on there i don't know who knows it's still working it's working right yeah cool it's like i don't know why it that does that so you sometimes the switch doesn't work Okay, now that switch is working. So if I do that, doesn't work, does it? Still doesn't. I don't know why it does that? Who knows? So when you do that, it goes, and then when you go here, it doesn't. Hmm. Why is that, do you reckon? I don't know. Why is that? I don't know why that is. It switches, you know what I mean? If anyone knows the information, please just let me know in the comments. Like, why is it when sometimes I switch um, scenes, when I kind of put this in the background, it doesn't switch. But then when I put the screen up, it does switch. I don't know why that happens. I really don't. I'm really struggling here to figure this out. But hey, maybe I'll figure this out later. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But anyway, um, what's the next on the list? Uh, blah, 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 blah. What else we have here? Okay, we have this. So we have very concerning news in the fashion industry concerning Alexander Wang. And this story broke, I guess, over the last four days or so, right? Is it four days? Two days, actually. Um, where essentially, it feels like to me, again, this is just my, my perspective, but it does feel a bit like Groundhog Day. There's always, I feel like I've heard these allegations against Alexander Wang um, in terms of having a history of sexual harassment and assault and abuse, whatever else that you can put underneath that banner concerning people within the, the fashion industry. For the best part of maybe five years this story sort of seems to sort of repeat itself like it's akin to that meme have you seen that meme of that guy in a white suit it looks like he's at the Cannes film festival falling down the stairs and everyone sort of always says this flipping jason derillo or usher and it obviously isn't either of those people and it happened lot way long ago but whenever those um award ceremonies come around people always kind of regurgitate that same meme and i feel like the occasion is the same sort of thing um and they never seem to stick 
again i don't know why or i do know why because obviously he's a very popular guy but in terms of the severity of the allegations and in terms of the patterns and in terms of the frequency you would imagine that it would kind of alert people and sort of like get people's attention but no one seems to be paying any mind but again that will change this past weekend when a very brave young gentleman decided to do i guess a bit of a story time thing on tiktok where they you know talk about something that happened in their life and then they maybe leave out some names and it's maybe a, sometimes a very touching story a maybe a, a very a, sometimes a very touching story a sad story a traumatic story a happy one whatever it may be it's, it's kind of all the rage of the kids um but i guess this guy decided to um we tell a story about his unfortunate experience allegedly um in contact with alexander wang and somebody correctly guessed it i guess when they sort of replied to the story in his comments and then he basically you know elaborated some more on it and then that essentially led to an entire whirlwind of other allegations coming up from all these other different people and then it ended up on diet prada's platform you know the fashion call out critique um instagram account that was kind of um in the bad books of everybody at the beginning of lockdown it felt like especially during the whole black lives matter protest it felt like a lot of people were upset with some of their tone deaf posts i remember some of their sort of like taking the piss out of the easy the, the easy and gap collaboration some of the you know attacks that people felt that they were maybe being a little bit more critical of people like a virgil uh, being a black designer as they were to other um designers who are you know have a lot longer history of copying and plagiarism in the industry but regardless things that all that has been kind of forgotten because there's actually a real serious issue at hand here that we all i say we all but i say the industry itself has to kind of wrangle and kind of come to grips with the part that they've played in it because you know i've got my opinion on these things which i always think at the heart of it monsters and real evil people and disgusting human beings who will take advantage of people at their most vulnerable moment or hold abuse their power and influence are always going to exist and they'll always be within our midst and within our communities and within you know places that we go until the end of time it is the nature of the beast but i think the thing that we can address is the is the is the sort of enabling environment the kind of people that they surround themselves with to who kind of knowingly turn a blind eye to the abuse around them so that they can protect and maintain their own position those are the people that are mostly upset with so the people that are around him the enablers the friends the press the people in the media who knowingly hear these stories through the great fan because you know there's no there's no more chattier um gossipy industry subculture that exists in the world than fashion people know everyone knows everyone's business if you think you're doing things behind black behind closed doors trust me everyone knows who you're fucking who you're hanging around with who you go out with who you're cheating on with whatever it may be what money you stole what work you didn't do everybody knows so for everyone to somehow now decide to um collectively have a little bit of a what what's that thing called have a frog in their throat and not have nothing to say it says a lot about the industry but anyway let's continue with the story it's courtesy of Diet Prada said the internet is exposing Alexander Wang's history of sexual harassment. It says the beloved NYC designer rose to fame with his hard partying and anything goes ethos. Now multiple people are coming forward with their stories. So it says here, just days after designer Alexander Wang's birthday, where top models and celebrities celebrate New Orleans Instagram tributes, the internet is a buzz with allegations of his predatory substance fueled behavior. Interesting that he came on the day or the day after his birthday. A lot of people are doing this, right? I see a lot of victims of abuse are taking the are taking advantage of their abusers a celebratory day to essentially shoot them down in flames and I'm I'm here for it I think especially if the allegations are true um I think most of the time there is no recourse in the courts right the person isn't going to end up in prison they're probably not going to face any real long lasting consequences so the best thing that you can do is damage the one thing that they hold dearest their reputation right especially amongst people in the industry and if people are basically and expose the truth and show people exactly the level of monster and evil that they are and that is going to do more damage than any jail term could do and, and i would imagine it would also um be some sort of solace to the victims and provide them with some kind of um 
conclusion maybe some sort of justice maybe i think because I, I, i'm liking it again some people can think it's conniving but i like it. especially the allegations are true if the allegations aren't true then of course it's a whole different issue but if they are true taking advantage of the press and the attention on the person sort of throwing out a little grenade is a good way to go so it continues said so the designer has built his brand around the hard parting and anything goes creating a walk of shame inspired campaigns and even casting r kelly in his spring summer 17 campaign like if anything like imagine if a black designer did this like cast r kelly in a c in a 2017 campaign is insane um this isn't like 2018 no 20 or 2008 or whenever jay-z did the album with him or whenever right he kind of came back into everyone's collective consciousness it was <sighs> anyway his own almost mythic status as an nyc party figure has even been alluded to with models walking a runway in party animal and wang over hand bands for season 18 but now tales from behind the velvet rope are spilling out it began when Owen Mooney, a male model who came forward this weekend in a series of TikToks um, describing a 2017 incident where he was groped by Wang in a packed MRC nightclub. Um, and this um, other place called um, Ship Model Management reposted the story, leading many others to come forward. Um, some claim to have witnessed the victim being drugged by the designer or being slipped molly or other <laughs> drugs themselves without their knowledge, leading to blacked out nights and worse. This is similar. Again, this is all legend, but it sounds eerily similar to that guy in the UK recently um, who was... Uh, who was arrested and i'm assuming in prison he's definitely sentenced i'm pretty sure he was for a long period of time who did the same sort of thing he would hook up with dudes on grinder and slip them something in their drink ghb whatever it may be and kind of you know get them all um worse for wear and then you know take advantage of them in their worst condition possible um sexually and he did it to many people and i think the numbers were like in the hundreds the police said it might be sometimes i think the police even suggested it could be over 500 but because of the nature of the crime and because it involved men and because it involved maybe men who were kind of in the closet a lot of the a lot of those crimes won't be um reported to the police through shit through fear of shame you know i'm assuming if you're in a closet and you're not really sure about your sexuality the last way you want it to kind of come out in the open is via a, a kind of abuse story like this but it does sound eerily similar to that right the idea that he's sort of luring you in with this kind of good guy party kind of personality and then in your worst moment i'm taking advantage of you and of course there's also the power dynamic the fact that he's a very influential popular well-liked kind of media darling um essentially i guess apart from the Olsen twins maybe the only person holding up new york fashion week right in some some respects especially in a glitzy way again not, not in the underground i'm not saying but in terms of that way um so you can definitely see why some people would basically feel afraid to come out and step forward because he is um you know he represents a lot more than just his brand right he represents, he represents the whole infrastructure of fashion especially in new york or especially in the states um, there was repeat allegations of victims including um, several trans women being groped and having their bodies genitals exposed by Wang. Rapper and former Wang Muse at his earlier bank shared anonymous accounts that she's been sent on her Instagram stories in late 2019. So again, as Elliot Banks, people think she's crazy, but she definitely speaks truth to power. It continues, says, while the originals have been deleted, the screenshots still circulate on Twitter. Searching Twitter, in fact, yields many more tweets detailing similar behavior from the designer, some dating several years. Um, ship model management brought up that male model stories are often not given enough attention. We know that to be true. We've heard many stories of male models being taken advantage of by photographers. Um, I think of who's the guy with the bandana, the old guy looks like Santa Claus with the bandana. He was accused of some stuff that kind of got swept under the rug there's a few other people i think i'm gonna say i'm not gonna say the magazine if it was a magazine that got accused of doing something as well with a couple of dudes you know it is what it is isn't it like the double standards exist but no one wants to basically admit them but hey it continues it says and the mooney shared some of his backlash that he's already received he says this is why people are worried to share their story of sexual predators he said he captioned the story to comment accusing him of outsing wang in an attempt to gain clout which is insane right it says it continues a darling of the industry with multiple accolades wang is the latest and a string of powerful influential fashion fingers who've been hit with allegations of sexual harassment in recent years how much longer will money fame and celebrity clout excuse them from being held accountable of course so let's go through some of the screenshots here here's him talking guess being sexually assaulted by one counts right because in 2017 i was in a club in new york city and um me and a bunch of mates we went to watch the rapper cupcake and the club was just like hectic it was so packed you could not move and 
I was like by myself at one point and this guy next to me obviously like took advantage of the fact that no one could fucking move and he just started like touching me up Jesus and, Christ like, fully like up my leg like in my crotch like it made me like freeze completely because I was in so much shock and then I looked to my left to see who it was and it was this really famous fashion designer and like I just couldn't believe that he was doing that to me it just like, made me even go into even more shock um it was like really fucked up and then like i just had to like slowly move myself away like i weird jesus christ video, no, yeah. next next, next video i guess it's the video after the fact I mention any names but this comment surprised me just because they actually got it right and turns out alexander wang is a massive sexual predator and there's been a load of people that he's done this to. So imagine the horror, right? You're going through this terrible experience. You're probably young on the scene. You don't have many, you know, net contacts, network people. You're doing your best to be well behaved because in a lot of these fashion parties as well, they get so, so out of hand, but they're usually full of low, so many like decision makers and power play people. You're trying to be on your best behavior. You don't want to basically leave a bad impression, but you also want to take part. It's a very weird balance. So you, you finally do the thing and then you're kind of trying to mind your own business in a party that is, again, oversubscribed. That's a classic case of a fashion party. You have a party and, you know, it's packed to the bone and you can't move. Typical. It's either it's really empty or it's too packed. There's never in the middle. And then you're seeing this guy that you've known, right? You've seen him on interviews. You've seen his stuff in magazines. You've probably seen him at shows. You've people seen editors swooning all over him, giving him hair kisses. And here he is gripping you up and doing all sorts of madness to you in a club that you've obviously not given him permission to do. But then imagine the relief that you have after the fact when you've kind of got that weight off your shoulders and other people are coming out and basically saying, hey, he's done that to me also. You're not alone. But imagine the amount of time that he's had to suffer with this in silence, man. T disgusting. Absolutely disgusting, man. So, in that case, he needs to be exposed. Like, it's just really fucked up that people with this type of status, they think that their power, like, gives them this type of pass to be able to do this to people. Exactly. But it's so wrong. Exactly. And, like, now, anytime I see his name mentioned or... It's like I see him with celebrities, their like best friends or whatever. Like it just reminds me of what he did, and just it's just a really fucked up memory to have. So yeah, he just needs to be cancelled. And I'm sure that's the same thing for a lot of people in the scene, right? Even the most shittiest of people that you go and intern for, it's funny how that happens, right? That's not funny. It's really distressing because you maybe sometimes hear people, normies who are outside the industry, talk about certain figures and they're always eulogizing about them. Whereas you've actually been around these people, you've heard stories from close friends of yours who have had really bad experiences. They're not anecdotal. There are loads of patterns that you've kind of been here being regurgitated, and it sort of makes you think, God, man, if only people knew how this person was behind the scenes but again it's not your place to go and out people you know being a shitty person isn't a crime but still like this is prevalent right again this is obviously way more serious than being a shitty person but the amount of people that this could be said for is just maddening continue next slide it says here um uh this is i think guess he's um talking about it here on the text oh mooney spoke about this again if it's the same dude because the next slide shit on the management post another thing it says um Alexander Wang is absolutely known for these things that you're posting one friend of mine who is a trans man was in a limo for an after party with him a while ago upon getting inside the car they were given water and they felt uneasy about um about the whole thing because Alex was making sure that they were all finished their water oh, this this alone should be enough grounds for because uh, I'm, I'm assuming he owns the entirety of Alexander Wang don't get me wrong but this should be enough to just terminate someone's contract on the spot this is insane right um god almighty this is sick so um upon getting into the car they were given water and they were felt uneasy about the whole thing because Alex was making sure that they had finished their water a few moments later they noticed that they were rolling and had been given molly water right insane this is a regular occurrence because a year after being told this story i heard from other people confirmed that they were also drugged on their way to an after party most of them left obviously because they were unknowingly on a lot of mdma and if you've ever tried to if you've ever taken mdma wood water you know how debilitating and disorientating the effects are how much more when you're not aware that you're taking it and you're just drinking normal water it's just insane to do that to somebody um, without the permission 
absolutely ridiculous. He continues to say, thank you for sharing this. I know multiple male models who went through similar situations and feel uncomfortable coming forward in fear of not knowing again, of not working again, right? Seeming weak, which is so heartbreaking, which happens a lot. There's this obviously lionization with interning, but once you do intern, you get into these positions in, in industry, you realize a lot of people don't actually work. They usually just use fashion as a kind of, as an excuse to basically go around, you know, travel around the world, hang out with kind of cool and interesting people and essentially party right so they usually get shit faced there's usually a lot of closet alcoholics you know um functioning drag addicts that exist in that scene and there's a lot of pressure on young people when they come into it to kind of keep up with that level and it's hard because again you're not established you don't have the funds you don't have the flexibility the prestige the influence whatever it may be to allow for some mistakes some missteps some not turning up to work so, you know, the amount of times i've heard of people working for certain designers who haven't turned up for work like four days in Bro, I haven't been to a studio, right? Always calling in sick. Why? Because they've been getting absolutely caned at home with their friends partying after an after party for an after party. So it's it's a really toxic, toxic environment. Again, I I, I dread to think what's happening on a girl side because this is happening on the male model side. Imagine what's happening on the female side. Especially, um, maybe it helps that a lot of the people behind the scenes involved with shoots and stuff aren't necessarily straight. I guess, right? You would have to say that maybe uh, taking as as a generalization. But God Almighty, man, it's horrendous. Um, said so here he puts drugs and drinks or pressures male models into parking, uh, sorry, into partaking those um, sketchy things, um, so that they can get his way. Especially by inviting them to his apartment, he ignores constant and consistent abuse and advantages on take a pair model. He's so disgusting. The apartment thing is always a big thing. You always hear people saying all the time, you know, go back to his apartment. Absolutely, it's basically a death sentence. Um, this is a standard thing I've heard over the years. It continues as well. It says here, yeah, this sounds like an encounter with him at Bedlam on Avs on Avs on fc sorry a few years ago it says he picked me out randomly and wanted to buy me shots then really pressured me to drink out of this huge bottle of vodka that he was toting around the memories are a bit blurry but i remember being drunk so imagine he's even he's even spiking vodka bottles and what a sicko he says that like um because usually if someone spikes your mdma you can taste it pretty quickly um it's pretty evident to see something else is in it but with vodka i'd imagine the taste is probably overpowering but hey he says yeah um he said, like, tugged out, um, it felt like being dragged, like, tugged out of the bar to, to his to his taxi. I can't remember anything else from the night, but I remember walking up to his bed, being so confused, and then he, take, he had taken my pants off and had his head down there. God almighty. I had no idea where or who this was until I saw his face. I woke up so stunned and confused and with a gash between my brows from the bottle that hit me, um, hit me with while forcing me to drink the night before jesus christ bleeding and he's still trying the thing he said it was so scary waking up there very lost next screen we have after seeing your stories i want to add my voice to the many that alexander wang is exposed for the monster he is once after a show he did the same molly water trick on me i didn't know at this time but i was by bi i'm bipolar and the molly sent me into a manic episode followed by psychosis jesus christ his smug prank literally put me in the hospital for weeks and ruined my career still in some horrible way i'm grateful that i had to I had, I had to be admitted to a psych unit God almighty, that night, because of who knows what would have happened had things gone as planned. Again, maybe it's again to some messages to younger folk out there, because I know some kids like to do as a prank. Don't spike your friends' drinks, even if you're wanting them to have a good time, feel they're uptight. Never, ever do that. I always kind of let people know or ask people's permission if they want to partake in any kind of class A substances. Don't ever do it in secret behind their back because you have no idea what people are going through. And in general, it's just not a cool thing to do regardless of what people are going through um, mentally or physically. Like, it really isn't. I know, you know, online people like to do pranks and fuck around and fool and make laughs and jokes and, and put up videos of their friends in uncompromising positions. But if you're actual, if you're somebody's friend, number one, you don't want to embarrass them by uploading videos of them online, of them worse for wear and inebriated and no idea where they are and losing their bearings. And number two, do not spike your friend's drinks. It's not cool. It's not funny. Um, it doesn't make you interesting. If anything, it makes you like a complete loser. 
happened um sorry another quote so it happened in 2015 um he threw a party at the Ra Ra room for his new store in london my friend worked at the store so i got um an invite to attend it was a fun night that went really sour when he wanted to continue the party at his hotel room again and this other sort of like abuser thing that he keeps doing um moving locations uh disorientating people forcing you into drinking peer pressure the influence of power all this sort of shit like textbook 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 abuser um i'm not a big drinker and when i do drink i get very drunk really fast i was introduced to him and took a liking to myself and he took a liking to myself and had a few other guys because we were dancing and having a very fun time we ended up staying very late and we he invited a couple of us back to his hotel room anyway he became very sexual aggressive and forceful when i declined his offer to go to his hotel room especially as i had seen him and a few others took, taking drugs and getting high the way he wouldn't take no for an answer and basically wouldn't let me go <sighs> God Almighty, my friend did a modeling job and his other man was there um, and they ended up party together and he kept offering my friend drinks even though he didn't want to drink that much but he wanted to be polite and ended up getting pretty drunk. See, again, this is the thing. The people that come into the industry don't get given this level of recourse, don't get this level of blood. It's just, oh my God. Um, as on the wang and had taken off his pants and was making him touch him, touch him, and was trying to make him give him a bird job, even though he was straight and told him he was straight. And my friend was barely coherent, but he ended up pushing him away and walking out the door. He has been scared ever since, scarred ever since. God Almighty he said, Here, yeah, he raped my friend because. Um, tried to pressure him into go there and have sex with him even though my friend isn't gay jesus christ sensitive comment what's this content here show this photo alexander wang what is this t you out here raping the girls azalea banks posted him a video a, a, a screenshot alexander wang sexually assaults trans women and needs to be brought down he's an abusive a, a violent snake da, 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 da. again more account here hi Zali Banks I heard what you said about Wang first off I'm sorry he disrespected you he's a serial predator and he has been accused of rape him and his greasy psychic Ryan Corbin attacked me at a party two and a half years ago they grabbed and squeezed my left breast and poured hard on it it was so painful because my tits were sensitive from hormones Jesus Christ and another trans girlfriend had to fight them off for trying to pull my girlfriend's panties down and after we spoke out about it on Facebook a gay boy came out and said Wang raped him at a party as well absolutely insane more accounts of a twitter here more accounts again the reason everyone's saying that they've always heard of rang is creepy is because he's always swept under the rug because male model stories are so often ignored in these conversations of course jesus christ and they just keep coming like i saw i've seen a few more um displayed on the timeline and uh, I'm hoping this is definitely going to be the change or definitely the moment for things to change a little bit because I think the conversation has sort of evolved somewhat and I think maybe with lockdown people are a little bit more sensitive to these stories but like I said before I think the industry and the scene needs to take a whole cold hard look at itself that it's allowed this monster to sort of you know uh, navigate around with little to no recourse because like I said previously monsters and evil people that take advantage of those who can't protect themselves who can't stand up for themselves or abuse their power and their influence are always going to exist this is something we're just going to have to um accept as a matter of life but what we cannot accept what we cannot stand by and tolerate anymore is people that enable that kind of behavior agents booking managers people interns colleagues uh, magazine editors wherever they are in the industry who's allowing this sort of thing to go on because what he brings ad revenue to a magazine or he provides clothes for shoots and stuff this is disgusting he gives you invites to parties and lets you sit front row you this is insane like people's lives are being ruined and destroyed um you know for you kind of co-signing and turning a blind eye to this guy's obvious problems and abuses of power like this has to stop it has to come to an end and everyone has to take a hold cold hard look at themselves and say like this has to come to an end because again if this is a group of pretty little white girls from scandinavia who were getting abused by a very very straight uh male designer this conversation will be entirely entirely different and we can't have these double standards exist if this is meant to be the global fashion scene and everyone's meant to be accepting and all voices heard diversity inclusion all this bullshit we have to take these things seriously and 
and address them as they need to be addressed. But again, big up all the victims coming out and speaking so bravely. I'm sure it wasn't an easy decision to make considering again how um, snaky and clicky and um, where the industry is or these sort of things. I can imagine there could be some sort of repercussions negatively to their careers, which is insane to think about. Just look at how long Terry Richardson existed in this fashion industry, right? Like people knew of his disgusting behavior for years and he was like the kind of go-to photographer for Vogue Paris and all this sort of things that just a maddening. And, you know, it, it came, and I think he's even working now under, under a pseudonym from what I've heard, um, or maybe sometimes uncredited on pictures and stuff. And he was able to kind of sustain a career for a long time. So we can't repeat those mistakes again, man. We can't repeat those mistakes again. These victims are owed much more than that. And hopefully we see a resolution coming up very, very soon. Again, I don't know what the resolution is. I don't know if he's going to be you know like you know uh, charged in court i don't know if people are going to do that i don't know if that means him stepping down from his position but regardless of what it may be if 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 um if uh, john galliano was cancelled for some anti-semitic rants at a restaurant or bar some time ago and had to kind of take a pause from fashion i would imagine spiking male models drinks you know unbeknownst to them and sexually groping them in parties and raping people should at least be um reason enough to step down for your position indefinitely it should be in it you'd imagine so but hey what do I know? Hopefully a resolution comes there. But let me know regarding the issue. What do you guys think? Um, is the is the industry as toxic as I'm saying it or as I'm, I'm overreacting? And um, why do you think he's able to be get away with it for so long? Isn't it? Again, like I've heard these stories for years uh, in the scene, whispers and here and there. And again, I haven't been anywhere near the guy and I've heard these stories. So I can only imagine what people closest to him have heard. But again, I'd love to know your opinions regarding it. Let me know in the comments down below. Okay, that is the Accidental Signal Show, episode number 416. Thanks so much for tuning in. As per usual, it's been a pleasure to have your company. If it's the first time tuning into the show, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and leave me a comment down below. That would be greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated. And um, yeah, man, happy new year, innit, I guess. Um, keep it tracking on. Don't get caught in the rain. If there is any rain, whatever it may be, um, write down your resolutions if you have any. Um, kiss those and hug those closest near you. And hopefully um, the new year brings uh, far better um, circumstances for all of us. Um, better prospects. We're able to do the things that we love. We're able to maybe connect with friends, explore the world, uh, pursue our careers and love our families, provide for them, whatever it may be. And, um, you know, hopefully we don't have any more crazy untimely passings as well because that's been a bit difficult to deal with as well and on top of everything that's been going on all these people passing away through you know various means hasn't been the best to deal with but hopefully we all hang on and brighter days are to come that is fingers crossed anyway thanks again for tuning in excellent English episode number 416 it's been a pleasure to have your company take care peace